Oh, you remember? Okay, this is how long we've been. Okay, I'm gonna just say this real quick. When I was living on Forest, and I was, <laughs> I was on was I on the train or on the bus? I was on the bus, and there was a guy. He he didn't talk. He just had little sticky notes, and he said on it. He said, like, my name is Jesus and this is that. And I'm not trying to be funny, but I thought he meant his name was Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, because it didn't say anything else. And then no, when yeah. I walked to my door, I didn't take it. He just showed it to me. And when I got to my door, it was a little sticky pad on my door. It was like, hello, my name is Jesus. And I was like, what? How long have you been sitting Thank on that you? one? I- I told you, see, you don't listen because I told you that. Yes. How long ago? But that, how long ago? I think the last time I mentioned it to you was, it was when we were at La Costa. Oh, no, I don't remember that. Mm. (laughs) But yeah, I was like, that was just creepy. It was probably Jesus. (laughs) You laugh and I did not even flinch. No. Why couldn't it have been Jesus? That was not. You don't know. It could have been Jesus. It could have been been Jesus or an angel. It obviously wasn't anything evil because nothing else happened to you. That's true. But why was the note on my door? Exactly. How would he have known where you lived? Is my thing. Exactly. That's why it's creepy. I think it's pretty cool myself. It's like creepy, but it's also pretty cool because it could have. It could have been Jesus. You don't know. What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us? Just a stranger (laughs) on a bus? You never know. (laughs) Listeners, what do you think? I was probably going to cut this out, but now I'm going to leave it in. So listeners, what (laughs) do you think? I'm going to take a poll. Was Was it it Jesus Jesus or was it just a random person named Jesus? Yes. And not Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and not Jesus. Even though, yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Or an angel, like Brittany said. Or an angel. Yeah. You just never know nowadays. True. But I don't, I don't know. I was just creeped out. People probably wouldn't have believed you, though. I was I probably would have recorded it, but people probably wouldn't have believed it. Oh, yeah, because you could easily do that. That's true. But I believe it because I know you. And you ain't got the time. (laughs) I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, yeah. We'll get right into it. After 10 minutes, we will get right into it. Greetings, strangers. I'm Britt. And I'm Dee. Welcome to another episode of It's It's a a Strange Strange World World After After All, All. the podcast where we discuss true crime cases, the supernatural, urban legends, conspiracy theories, and all of the things that keep the world strange. Oh, you know what? Uh, We just want to thank everyone who tuned in to the live Thank you for tuning in. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We had fun. Yeah, we did. It's always fun when there's wine involved. (laughs) And we're going to be doing more. So I'm putting it out there. We're going to be doing more. So stay tuned. Yeah. Wine and Crime. Is that a show? That's a show, ain't it? Uh, Sounds familiar. I don't know. Wine and somebody going to steal it if it's not. (laughs) <laughs> even though it wasn't kind yeah. it was demons yep but yeah thank you again yeah thank you I don't know why y'all I'm terrified I'm terrified of demons but like saying demons is funny to me like I don't know like to be like oh demons so like it was demons like what if <laughs> what if I ran across a demon I'm not with the shits like I'm not about that life oh yeah I think that's everybody <laughs> <laughs> Especially black folks. Black folks don't play about demons. At nope. 
Oh yeah, we're <laughs> late. Was, we are very late. We finally oh, saw. Well, a note. I'm not late. <laughs> oh look, clarify. I'm not late because I saw I it before you, you saw it. No, that was the second you time know I saw what, it. Brittany, you know what, Brittany? Because you told us to told, wait. Because you, no, we could have went. We were waiting for you. It. No, I literally, and I said because Chris Cause was sitting there too like when I said it to you. She even knew that I had already seen it. I said, well, I've already seen it. But I was like, y'all might as well wait because I was going to see it again. But no, I had mm, already okay. seen it. I said, because I said, mm. I said one of our, li- I said, you don't be listening to me. I said one of our listeners reached out and we were talking about it. And they were like, y'all should do movie reviews. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm the only see, one that's seen it. You just texted me and said somebody reached out to you and said we should do movie reviews. That's all that was in your text message. What you say? I have. I said no. I have recorded proof. I'm gonna go back and find the recorded proof where I said I saw it. Maybe I wasn't listening. You know, because all I heard was y'all might as well wait, huh? I said it's because you be tuning me out. I do. I do. Because you tend to like drag. Yeah. But I do that with everybody, so don't feel bad. I don't, because I'm going to still keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> In today's episode, we discuss the disappearance of toddler Tika Lewis. Tika Lewis was born on July 4th, 1996 in Tacoma, Washington. Her mother, Teresa, describes Tika as a shy mama's girl. If a family member or friend tried to hold her or get close to her, she would scream and cry. On January 23rd, 1999, Teresa, her five children, and a few family members went to the Frontier Lanes bowling alley. Tika, who was two years old at the time, had been playing a few yards away from where the family was bowling. She was at the foot of a video game machine that was only a few feet away from the side door entrance. Teresa turned away to watch her son bowl, and when she turned back to check on Tika, she was gone. I I just don't know that I would let my two-year-old be even more than like a foot away from me. Like... Because they wander. Like, they wander off, and then they be moving fast. That's, like, around the age where, like... No, for yeah. real, that's, like, around the age where it's, like, everywhere they go, they have to run. And it's, like, I don't want to be in a situation where you take off running, and then I got to run to catch you. But, like, Teresa and her sister, they were saying that she was so... Like, not scared of people, but she wouldn't. It was to the point where she wouldn't wander off because she would run into somebody and she would be scared to, like, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, I get what you're saying. So she felt like it was okay since it was only a few feet away. And she she felt like she knew Tika wouldn't. She wouldn't wander off. She wouldn't approach anybody. If anybody approached her, she would like start crying or something. Dream. So she felt, yeah. So I guess she felt like it was okay since she wasn't that far away. I don't play. I guess too, I'm just paranoid. Yeah. And I think that's with any parent. But the way she was describing it is... The whole time she was watching her the whole time. But then when her son got up to bowl, she turned away that one time. And then that's when it happened. I just watch a lot of stuff because you hear about stuff like that happening. It's in a matter of seconds, especially if you're out in public like that. I just, I'm the type of parent to like put my kid on the leash, like that kind of parent. I knew you were about to say that. If you're that young. Yeah. If you are that young, I just, you got to be, yeah. I need to feel your breath like <laughs> on me. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Cause what was that other, was it, it was Netflix, um, Unsolved Mysteries, the one about those kids going missing. Um, was it Indiana? I don't know. They went missing on like the playground. And it literally oh, was yeah. like in a matter of seconds. And the mom was like, I was sitting there watching them play. Like, and yeah. turned my head for a second. And it was like, whoop. Yep. That's scary. That is. 
Teresa's sister, Dawn, later told reporters it must have been 10 to 15 seconds that she looked away. It was that close. Someone had to have been watching. Teresa immediately started to panic and began calling Tika's name. When she went outside to look for her, she realized that the door was too heavy for a two-year-old to push open. And then, yeah, again, not nah, I. Again, I'm not victim blaming at all. Like what happened to them could happen to anybody. Yeah. Like you said, it could happen to anybody. And she was just a few feet away. It, she wasn't even that far. Uh, so, yeah. Have you ever been somewhere and you'd be like, who baby is this? Like, why is your baby just yeah. running around? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I have, unfortunately. Like I told you that night I found that baby outside of Walmart. Well, not a baby, but he was probably like four or five. Too young outside to of be Walmart. by himself. Yeah. Yeah. And it was what, like 10, 10, 30 that night? hmm So, yeah. I've seen it. By this time, the family had joined in the search and let employees know that Tika was missing. Employees stated that there was an announcement made over the speaker system. However, some of the people that were there that night said they never heard an announcement. So there, it was a lot of conflicting like statements because you would Mm -hmm. have some people because I mean, it was, I'm pretty sure it was packed. It was a Saturday night. So you have people, yeah, you have Some people saying one thing and other people saying another thing. So they people were saying that the employees basically didn't do anything. But then you have people who say they did. So I don't know. Yeah, I can believe. I mean, I wasn't there. I can believe that maybe they did make an announcement, but maybe because who pays attention? Like, especially if you're there to have fun, they probably just got lost in the commotion of things. Yeah, Yeah. maybe. Yeah, that could be true. Maybe. Uh, I wonder, this is probably around the time that I had got lost (laughs) in the mall when I got (laughs) lost, but I was a lot older than she was. Oh, yeah, because this was, what did we say, 90? Yeah, 99. 99, Mm mm-hmm. I ain't going to say how old I was, even though if you listen listen to the show, you know how old we are. I was about to say. I was just older. (laughs) Then I was just we older just than that birthday. <laughs> yeah, well, fortunately, fortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Teresa was adamant that Tika wouldn't just wander off and she must have been taken. There have been conflicting reports about how police handled the situation. Some people remember police searching every car that left the bowling alley, while others don't remember their cars being searched. Police were also criticized for not putting the building on lockdown. Do we know the time frame? Like how much time passed from when she, from when she first went missing to when to this point to when? So when the, the police, police showed up, got involved. Yeah. Um, I want to say it wasn't. Hold on, because I don't remember. I don't think I came across that. Like I them mentioning it how long it was. Yeah, I figured it was because, in the articles. I was just curious to know. Yeah, if they criticizing because, the police. Yeah, but like this one. There wasn't really any, okay, let me see, any, inf- like, a lot of information on it. Yeah. So, um, because I did find a timeline, but they didn't mention, yeah. So, it says she was last seen at 10, 15 p- p.m. Man, um, that's late. I know. Um... Yeah, I don't see a time frame for that. Okay. Oh, okay. So she went missing 10, 15 p.m. She was reported missing. So I'm guessing when they told the um, employees at 10, 30 p.m. So they looked for okay. about 15 minutes before they... Um, okay, so they're running around. Bowling alley. Yeah, but this... 
this timeline says they just arrived, so it doesn't say what time. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, at that point, though, would it have honestly done any good for them to lock down, put the building on a lockdown, if it's been, like, an hour since she first went missing? Like, I'm pretty sure she was would have been long gone. I don't even think it would have made a difference in that 15 minutes yeah. because she's already, and my, I'm thinking she's already gone. So Yeah, because if you're going to snatch a kid, you leaving. I don't think that you yeah. would stick around for that. Yeah. Huh. A couple of days after Tika disappeared, a woman came forward claiming to have seen a dark red Pontiac Grand Am speeding out of the parking lot. It wasn't until she watched the news that she realized it might have had something to do with Tika's case. Police put out a bolo or be on the lookout for a dark colored Grand Am, but this led nowhere. So then... That goes back to maybe people didn't know because if she didn't know anything until, well, no, because I feel like if she would have heard the announcement and she knew some, you know, something happened, that's a little suspicious. She probably would have reported it to the police then and there. Yeah. Instead of two, two, three days later. So maybe that's true. She didn't hear the announcement. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, because. The only time that I've heard those announcements have been in like a store, like a Walmart, and ain't much happening outside yeah. of shopping in a Walmart. So I don't know what yeah. that what it would be like in a bowl in a packed bowling alley. And then Walmart, they use codes just in case. So I think a missing child is a code Adam. So they'll just say code Adam. So all of the workers know to look for a kid. And then I guess they they don't say the description over the intercom. They say it like on their little radios because just in case the person is still inside the store and they don't want to like tip them off. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Because I've heard Code Adam before, but, but that so was like it. For, for civilians though, because I swear, and this could be just because it was like the late 90s, early 2000s that I've heard someone say, or maybe they called the person's name. Maybe they asked the person their mom's name and they were like, hey, we're looking for a Jane Doe. Can you come to like uh, yeah, customer service? Yeah, they've done that, but. Oh, okay, okay. That's yeah. what I was trying to like. What do you tell civilians? Like, how do you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They have different. Yeah. Oh, but in this case, I get what you're saying. Because in this case, they have to make an, an alert the workers that there was a missing child, not that they found a child. And they were trying to keep it on the down low. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what I'm thinking. But then this was back in the 90s. So maybe they did say, hey, we have a missing child. Kid is missing. (laughs) Yeah. No, D, I think you're right. Because I want to say when I work retail at the mall that we did have a code word for that too. Now that you mention it. Yeah. Yeah, because Code Adam, that's named after the kid, um, Adam Walsh. Mm-hmm. What's his dad's name? God, because he does um, he, the America's Most Wanted, the host of America's Most Wanted. That's his dad. Because he was kidnapped and murdered. Uh, John Walsh? J- yes. I don't dad? know why I couldn't think okay. of his name. Yeah. I had to look it up. Yeah. Uh, Adam John Walsh, November... Was an American child who was abducted from a Sears department store at the Hollywood Mall in Hollywood, Florida. Mm -hmm. There's a Hollywood, Florida. Yeah. On July 27th, 1981. Yeah. And you have that. And then you, of course, the Amber Alert for the little girl that went missing. And was it Arlington? Ooh, D. uh, Yeah, I think it was Arlington. I think. Amber Hagerman. No, I know who she is. I don't remember where. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Arlington. (laughs) Why are you laughing? Because it sounds right. But I'm just saying all that to say this is most likely before all of that. Yeah. So they probably didn't even have like the little code words. They probably just made an announcement. And half the people probably wasn't paying attention. Probably. I had got stuck on the Amber Alert page. Arlington, Texas, yeah. 1996, Arlington, Texas. Yeah. 
On Tuesday, January 26th, three days later, two search dogs led investigators to a bushy area across the street from the bowling alley. Police found a pile of men's clothing, which had been rolled up into a ball and seemingly stashed or discarded under a bush. None of the clothing had mold or mildew on them, so it was believed they hadn't been there long. The items were a navy blue wool pea coat with the initials IS or JS on the back label, off-white Lee brand jeans, and a Columbia brand button-down plaid shirt. Tika's disappearance wasn't the first incident at the Frontier Lanes bowling alley. Two months prior, in November 1998, a young boy was molested in the bathroom. The description given was that of a Caucasian man with a beard. So that could have been any white man that was there. Basically. Basically. Yeah. Employees said that the man looked familiar and they'd seen him there before, but they never saw him again after that. They're saying they never saw him again after that incident. After, yeah, that incident. Yeah. So he could have easily, though, shaved his beard. Yeah. And came back. Yeah. Man. Okay. Two weeks later, a Caucasian man with brown hair, no beard description here. So a Caucasian (laughs) man with brown, no, yeah, with brown hair attempted to lure a six-year-old boy out of the bowling alley, but was unsuccessful. On the same day Tika went missing, a man tried to lure two children from a parking lot less than a mile from the bowling alley. The man fled in a blue Pontiac Grand Am. They need to chill. This this man needs to chill. Uh, yeah. And by this yeah. point, the bowling alley should have had either signs posted or like scheduled announcements to go off about people monitoring their children because obviously. Yeah. <laughs> this kept happening. Yeah. Yes. And you know what? It. I didn't even think about that because if... I'm not a parent, but if I would have known, I wouldn't have even went to the bowling alley. We would have went somewhere else. Hello? Like, so, uh, yeah. I don't know about and that. Or, they yeah, or hired security or something. Yes, that too. Like, you should have had people by the, yeah, like somebody to guard the yeah. door. I agree. Yeah. Because even outside of, yeah, not even going to that bowling alley, but yeah, if you know, you can at least be like alert. Yeah. We make sure. I keep my eyes on my kids at all times, even if it's just a couple of seconds, because yeah, they're really out here. And then that's the second time somebody mentioned a Pontiac Grand Am. The first lady yep. said it was red, but they were saying she probably just thought it was red because of how dark it was outside. So yeah. it could possibly be the same car. I was thinking that too, that that's a bit of a, that that was too much of a coincidence. Yeah. That this could very well be the same man. Yeah. And the fact that these people frequent the same places, like in general. Yeah, they should, or they could have had, like the police could have had undercover cops like in the area, because that's too much happening in a short amount of time. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Maybe we need to rethink our professions. Maybe we need to be a chief of police. Polices. <laughs> the chief the chief of the police. <laughs> police believe foul play was involved and Teresa believed Tika was abducted but was still alive. The family was quickly eliminated as suspects and so was Tika's dad who was in jail at the time. The body of a young girl was found outside of Kansas City, Missouri, about two years after Tika disappeared. She was believed to be around four years old at the time, so the same age Tika would have been. And it's going to get graphic, so... Oh, it was already graphic. Yeah, we should have put a trigger warning. Yeah, trigger warning. Because I forgot to tell you that at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Her head was found wrapped in a plastic trash bag about 200 yards away from her body. It was later determined that the girl was Erica Michelle Marie Green. That who would 
do something like that. That is to a four year old. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Some mm-hmm. people are just sick. Yeah, it makes you wonder. In 2006, a private investigator hired by the family found a girl living in an RV park in Dallas, Texas, who seemed to match Tika's description. According to Teresa, the girl looked similar to Tika and had the same earlobes. Photos were sent to Teresa that showed the girl in the care of a woman. Teresa was certain that she had seen the woman at the bowling alley the night Tika went missing. However, the FBI stated the girl wasn't Tika or related to her in any way. Did they do DNA testing? I would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I didn't put this in there. I meant to make it one of my notes, but I just forgot. But um, the night that she went missing, Teresa did tell police that it was a sketchy looking woman at the bowling alley. And so this is who she thinks she saw. She, yeah, she says she's certain that that's the woman she saw, but the FBI, they, you know, investigated, did the DNA test and it wasn't her. On January 23rd, 2010, a man approached Teresa at a vigil for the 11th anniversary of Tika's disappearance. He explained that he was a psychic and had a vision regarding the location of Tika's remains. Teresa passed the information to investigators who began digging in a small area of land in the Native Gardens at Point Defiance Park in Tacoma. The search turned up nothing. Psychics, I I don't know. Oops, my bad. <laughs> Mine went off too, but my stuff was on side land. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. But I don't know how much I trust psychics in these situations. Well, in any situation, really. Like, there was one story where a psychic really did help solve a case but that was like the only one that I found where the you know the police and the detectives backed her up because I ended up seeing it on one of those ghost shows I was watching I want to say it was like paranormal witness or something where people tell their like paranormal stories and they had the cop and the psychic there and they were telling how she helped them solve a murder which led them to a serial killer Oh. So that's the only one I found. But yeah, I don't too much trust psychics. Yeah, I'm on the fence about them because I do believe in psychics. Like I do believe that people have like psychic. I believe that everybody to a certain extent has like psychic abilities. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like some people just uh, vibrate at like a higher frequency and can actually tap into their or like control their like premonitions or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It just sucks, though, that this even if he had good intentions that he yeah. probably got their hopes up. Yeah, that he got their hopes up and then nothing turned up and ended it that no, they yeah. found nothing. So that's pretty yeah, sucky. Cause, and then that makes me think of Sylvia Brown, but that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> a whole nother discussion. Who's Sylvia Brown, D? You don't know who? I mean, you just say stuff like, oh. like that everybody oh. knows who Sylvia I mean, I'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure yeah. people know who she is, but she was a psychic who used to be on Montel Williams. And she didn't she didn't predict nothing right. She didn't even get her own death right. Uh, I was like, you know what? No. She was a no. I mean, RIP, but yeah. On October 13th, 2010, a man was arrested on suspicion of child luring. That man was 56-year-old John William Black. He tried to lure a three-year-old girl at Tower Lane's bowling alley in Tacoma, Washington before being stopped by her father. He claimed he didn't know anything about Tika or her disappearance. I hope his, I hope, I hope <laughs> he beat you know what? his earth. I know. I hope. <laughs> and then I wonder what kind of car he drove if he had a car. Because Ooh. that's, it's a different bowling alley, but it's the same MO. 
you're taking yeah. kids from bowling alleys. So I would hope, yeah, by 2010 that he still didn't have his I Pontiac. Mean, but what do you do for a living? Some, so <laughs> I was gonna say, some people can't afford new cars. 2010. How many years? That's, I mean, hey, like 20, 20 you, years. I know, I know, but you that never know. Years. It wasn't 20 you years, first of all. That math was wrong, but yeah. Oh, I was not paying attention to what you said. I said, I said about 20 <laughs> years, ain't it? <laughs> but no, sorry. It's about a good 10, 11. No, I'm sorry, 11, because yeah. that would have been 2099. But yeah, you're right. You never know. Yeah. Is he Caucasian? I'm guessing he was. I didn't see anything about his race, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. On June 11th, 2012, while Teresa was shopping at a store in Tacoma, An unidentified male asked her then 14-year-old daughter how old she was and told her she was cute and tried to lure her away. What what is going on in Tacoma? I don't know. What is going on with the male species would be another valid question. (laughs) True. (laughs) What the heck? (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, I know this happens everywhere but this seems like a lot yeah especially in the 90s oh yeah yeah because it wasn't like it was today it wasn't like a lot of surveillance what do you call not i hate that word surveillance i always want to say surveillance i don't know why or surveillance (laughs) Surveillance. you were about to (laughs) surveillance but i was thinking of uh, cctv was what i was thinking of oh yeah yeah and now people are quick to record on their phones. So it, it oh, wasn't, yeah. that wasn't, you know, that didn't happen back then. Yeah, that's true. So in January 2020, a detective started looking over the case. He came across an interview from 1999 that wasn't followed up on. A 17-year-old boy who was at the bowling alley that night saw a report about Tika's case on the news a few days after she went missing. He recognized her face and called the police. He recalled seeing a Caucasian man in his 30s with brown hair and pockmarks holding the hand of a little biracial girl. He remembered him because the guy bumped into him, almost knocking him over as if he were in a rush. He just assumed it was a man rushing his daughter to the restroom. When he saw Tika's face on the news, he immediately recognized her as the girl he saw holding the man's hand. As the detective dug deeper into the case, he came across another similar witness statement. I don't understand how they didn't catch this the first time around, especially because, yeah, because there were more than one, there was more than one statement like this. Mm -hmm. So that should have been a red flag. Oh, but the other similar statement, I don't, that one, I couldn't find the timeline, but I think it was a little bit afterwards because you're going to say you're going to get into the second one, but oh yeah, I just don't understand why. I mean, it could have led to nowhere, but if he remembered the man, they could have at least gotten, that's what I was going to say because They had all these descriptions, but I didn't see anything about a police sketch. Everything I read never mentioned a police sketch. So I'm thinking like this boy got a clear look at him and this was a few days later. So I'm pretty sure he could still remember his face. They could have at least gotten a sketch artist. That's true. But I never came across anything saying anything about a sketch. So, yeah. And that just... That description matches the description of the molest the guy that had been accused yeah. of molesting like the boy, yeah. The little boy, yeah. Yep. Yeah. There was a reenactment at the bowling alley, and there were several people in attendance. One person at the event reported a suspicious man. He was described as a Caucasian man with brown hair and pock marks. Unfortunately, this information didn't uncover any new leads. When did the reenactment happen? That's what I was saying. It wasn't clear because this was the Um, similar witness statement. So I don't know when that happened. I don't know what a reenactment would have done. 
as far as like getting new leads, unless they were hoping that the guy would show up. Because you know how right. sometimes people come back to the scene of the crime or, you know, something like that. But but then why wouldn't that witness, if she noticed him, why wouldn't she say anything at the reenactment? Or did she? Oh, that's a good that's question. That's what I wasn't clear on. Yeah, if she waited or if she said it then and there. So I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Because when did the description, when did the original description Ah, well, I guess they didn't. Well, shoot. What am I trying to say? Because did they have an overall description of who they thought the suspect were was? Yeah. Or was it just a bunch of people oh, saying? No. It uh, was just a bunch of people saying, describing this person. That's why I said I don't understand why they didn't bring in a sketch artist. Because there were a lot of people that was describing a man and they were describing the same man. Right. Caucasian with brown hair. In, yeah. And pockmarks. And now pockmarks. So pockmarks were mentioned, I think, twice. But everybody else said a white man with brown hair and a beard. And then you had the type of car come up more than once. Yeah. 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 The Pontiac. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah. I don't know. The guy, the 17-year-old, he gave them that description in 1999 because this was Mm -hmm. a few days after... It happened. So, yeah, I don't understand. I wonder why they didn't follow up. Maybe they just thought it was insignificant, but, like, I don't know. It feels pretty significant. Yeah. January 23rd, 2022 marks 23 years since Tika went missing. Her mom, Teresa, and loved ones continue to hold a candlelight vigil every year. Tika's case remains unsolved. So. Boo! Yeah, that's unfortunate because I wonder if anybody, well, this could be included in my final thoughts, but you had how many descriptions of the same guy? You had two people mention the car and I wonder if, because I didn't see anything mentioned about a license plate or like a partial license plate because they could have even did something with that, but And then normally, this could just be on TV. I don't know. But when they get a description of a car, like, I don't know how popular that type of car was back then, but they will literally like, well, this could be on TV. Like I said, like get a (laughs) list of people who bought that car and just go through the list and see. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can do that for real, but I feel like they could have tried a little harder. Yeah. Because I don't want to bring race into it because she was biracial. And, you know, the way they look at it, if you're mixed with a little bit of black, you're black. So, yeah, I wonder if that could have had anything to do with it, with her dad being black and his her dad being in and out of jail and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's just know. frustrating because I feel like they could have done more. Right. And then how, like, I don't know. I agree, D, because I'm trying to think of like, uh, yeah, what all they do in real life versus like what you see on TV. But you would think yeah. that with all those descriptions, you would be a little bit, a little bit more proactive. And then like how, cause like the Caucasian man with brown hair, yeah, that's pretty broad. But like pockmarks, I don't even know how many people that I've seen in life, like in real life, that have those. Yeah, so I was it's just like, about to say, uh, yeah, uh, that's a pretty. I don't think I've ever seen anybody in person with. That. I've seen like we were saying the, I forgot his name, the dad, the dad from Selena, the guy yeah. that plays the dad. He has it. That's the only person I've really seen with it. So yeah, I don't know. That's unique in the words of Beyonce. Yeah, ha 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 ha. <laughs> And then did they have camera footage back then? I'm assuming not. No, they didn't. They But see, the thing is, they had cameras at the reenactment. So this lady told y'all what she saw. She told y'all the same description as the, the guy gave you in 99. Y'all telling me y'all couldn't run that footage and see if y'all saw him? 
Right. I would have been looking for every, they do it to us, hell. Yeah. I would have been looking for every yeah. Caucasian man with brown hair, like, and you should be cooperating anyway, because if you didn't do it, it should be like, yeah, I, you know, whatever you need for yeah. me, because I didn't do this. So, yep. That's crazy. Yeah, it's just crazy to me to think like cases like this that are unsolved, but then you have like instances where someone or a person of color is innocent and ends up in jail. And it's like, well, how did you come to this conclusion? But then you have all of this, all of these descriptions and you couldn't find one person in that neighborhood? Exactly. Unless he was in front of that neighborhood, but then he always went to the bowling alley. He was there. Yeah. If this is the same guy, he was there a lot. Yeah. Mm. True. The la- the last thing I'm going to say too, isn't it suspicious like for a grown man to be at a bowling alley by himself anyway, like without a team, like unless you play for a team. Oh. Wouldn't it's that suspicious be a little suspicious for anybody for to, be to be by themselves? Cuz yeah, why are you at a bowling alley by yourself? Right, a place for family, a yeah. place for family fun or group fun cuz he probably was by himself. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough one. It's a tough one to swallow. It is. That is all, folks. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at It's a Strange World Podcast, Twitter at Pod Strange World, and on Facebook and TikTok at It's a Strange World After All. Also, turn on those notifications for our Instagram posts so that you can keep up with our hashtag Myth Mondays and hashtag Strange Saturdays posts. Yes, we would love to hear from you. What did you think of this week's episode? Also, if there's anything in the world of strange or any true crime cases that you would like us to cover, let us know. Have you ever heard a strange bump in the night? Have you ever seen shadow figures moving about? Have you ever stumbled upon something unexplainable? We want to know about it and with your permission, share it with our listeners. You can email those submissions to it's a strange world after all at gmail.com or DM us at any other social media platforms D mentioned. Even if you just want to say, hey there, we'll be here. Oh yeah, let us know. Did was it Jesus that visited D? Was it an evil spirit that visited D? Or was it just a homeless crackhead that visited D? How are you just gonna throw evil in there? I mean, because it could have been somebody pose. It could have been an evil spirit posing as a, a good spirit. Don't put that on me. I mean, ain't nothing happened since then though, so I mean I've had some pretty bad luck up until now. <laughs> Yes, but like first world look, not like earth shattering bad look. Okay. Thank you for tuning into another episode of It's It's a Strange Strange World World After After All. All. People positivity. Think positive thoughts and you will always have positivity surrounding you. If you surround yourself with negative thoughts, then you will only have negativity surrounding you. So true. Food for thought. And thank you as always. Thank you as always uh, for keeping. Oh, if you, I should have said this earlier. If you did miss a live, the replay is on our Instagram. It is on there for you guys. Yes, you can watch it in one setting or watch it in multiple settings. Um, It's up to you. Yeah, but please just watch it. (laughs) Please. Please. (laughs) Um, And. Thank you, as always, for keeping it strange with us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.